uh, chapter 4. And I want to teach um, simply, you know, I, I'm like, God, I, I don't and will never have and never will just teach a message just to be teaching a message out of memory. I, I, I'm like, God, I want to be, de- be tuned in into the frequency of heaven. What are you saying? And then take what I hear from God and just put it down. That's how these messages are coming forth. So this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, hoping against hope. Hoping against hope. When God seemingly, and the key word is seemingly, can't be found. I don't know if y'all live long enough or there's enough Christians that's been in this thing long enough to know that you had a word of God, your Bible, <laughs> CDs. A relationship with God, been in church for years, but sometimes there are times and periods in our life when it seems like in the natural God can't be found. Like, where are you, God? In other words, where are you, God? This is crazy. What's going on right now? I mean, when it when it rains, it pours like bam. Something else happens. Hey, Amen. You're tithing. You're confessing the word. You're walking in love, praying for your enemies, and you just keep negative. Like, okay, God. Where are you? That's what I mean by when God can't be found. Seemingly. That's the key word. He's there. He's there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, I'm with you to the end of the world. But I want to relate to those people that have to hope against hope because it seems like it's just hopeless, man. I mean, there are situations, whether it's with your child, you know, that, that it's like this is, this is. You know, you can be with son so long. We're going to talk about Abraham who hoped against hope. He got to remember, God first spoke to him when he was 75. He said, get out of his father's house. It was 100 years old when the promise finally, when Isaac finally came. That's 25 years. I mean, you know, you can lose hope easily in 25 years. And you have, sometimes you just have to hold on and hope against hope. I don't even know why I'm coming to church. I don't even know why I'm still ushering. I don't even know why I'm sitting here. I, but I know I can't quit. That's right. That's right. That means you haven't given up hope. Sometimes you're just doing it by faith. You have to hope against hope. And I'm sure there were mornings he woke up and looked at his body. His thing is, it was about 100 years old. The Bible said it was good as dead. Read the Amplified. That means it was, it was, it was rough. Sarah's womb was dead, you know, and, and she looked at grandma and the, and the devil, I, I'm sure, for 20, you crazy. Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just give up? I'm going to talk to people like that that's got a child, maybe a relationship, maybe a diagnosis, uh, from, a diagnosis from the doctor that just says, you know, you, you've you been diagnosed with this metastatic cancer, it's in the last stage, and, and, and hoping against, but I don't care. I'm going to. Still, see, hope. Let me tell you why this is important. Let me go in and let's put this definition up. I, I, I simplified this definition. I've used it over the years, but what I've tried to do is break it down. Hope is simply favorable expectation for good. Favorable expectation. See, when you lose all expectation, it's basically saying things are going to turn in my favor. I know it's been a long time, and I don't know where God is in this thing. I don't know why I got fired on the job. I don't know why, you know, that house that we applied for didn't go through. I don't know why, even though I had seniority on my job, they didn't give me the promotion. But I'm going to hope again. Maybe there's something bigger God sees. This thing is going to turn in my favor. Amen. It's going to turn around. In my favor. And it's so important to have expectations because when you lose hope, you lost everything. You don't have any hope, no expectation. So why should I even go to church? Why am I putting on clothes? Why am I going to sit and inquire? Why should I even read my Bible anymore? I mean, look at my child. Look what the doctor said. Look at this relationship. Look at my marriage. Look at whatever it is that trying to create hopelessness. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this so different. I'm going to do it how I feel it. I think now would be a good time to bring up that kiddie scripture because when we talk about losing hope, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, which is Proverbs 13, 12, which says hope deferred. The word deferred means to put off, 
or to postpone or to, or to cancel. When something been canceled, you ain't got no more hope when you've deferred it and it's been put off and you lose all hope because we're talking about hoping against hope. It makes the heart, your spirit man, sick. You're sick on them. We ain't talking about physical sickness. We're talking about a sick heart, a sick spirit. They're just tired of standing and believing. And why should I even go to church? Why am I even a Christian? Why? If you don't watch it, hope and this hopelessness will even try to leave you become suicidal. Why am I even here? Why am I going to work tomorrow? I might want to end it all. That's a sick spirit. And it's amazing how we be smiling on our face. And dancing, and hallelujah, and looking good here, but our spirit, our spirit man is really tired, it's weary, it's like, man, I, I, God, I can't take that. Where are you? That's my part. Because that's what my title, when seemingly God can't be found. I'm doing everything right. And this thing is getting looking worse. That's why God came to bind up the broken heart. He can see beyond the smile, the preaching, the singing, the hallelujah, the whatever you got to do, ushers, good morning, and all the time, good, ain't good for me. You know, I mean, all this stuff on the inside. I'm talking, I'm talking to the real people. I ain't talking about the folk who always just go deep, never go through nothing. You had coffee with Jesus this morning. I know. He was at my table. Really? Right. Okay. Whatever. This ain't for you because you already, he was, you had coffee with him this morning. He, he wasn't. I went, to, I went to Duncan. I had to go to Duncan. I did, literally. I wanted to meet some Duncan. But he came to your house and y'all had coffee. Pray for me. I ain't there yet. He said, but when desire cometh, that tells you a lot. It's a true life. So then think about what he's saying. Hopeless is the first big talk, but when desire. That, a hopeless person is someone who's lost all desire. Why am I even living? Why am I doing it? Why am I going to church? Why am I singing on choir? Why? Look at my relationship. Look at my husband. Look at my wife. Look at my child. He's on drugs. I got a son that's in prison. Been in there for a certain day. They're talking about executing him. And here I am. What am I doing here? Lost so-and-so. My cousin, mama. We got to remember over a million people was lost during the pandemic. And people still healing. I know we think it's even though the actual stage of it is over, the effects still linger. Yeah. I've met people who lost loved ones doing this thing, and they're asking, God, where were you? Why, why you allow this? And uh, my husband, we know God didn't do it. Why my wife, my cousin, my child? Why I mean, what? And they're like, oh. but you got hope against hope. Now that I've painted a picture of who and what I'm talking about, let's, let's look at it from the scriptures. Hoping against hope. You just got to go on anyhow, even though you desire. Sometimes you desire, I want, I'm sure I ain't trying to know what I'm talking about, getting up to sing it like, my God, God I, they, I need the people to sing to me this morning. And you just go on and just put out, make a demand on that gift anyhow, preach anyhow. But inside, it's like, I'm tired. <laughs> it's okay to admit that. I don't know why some of y'all like, oh, Christians, we, yeah. Even the young men shall utterly faint and get weary. But they that way to have you not heard, he giveth power to the faint. And them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the young men shall utterly faint and get weary. But they that wait, hope, expect on the Lord, shall renew their strength and will mount up with wings of an eagle. They'll run and be not weary. And walking out. See, the devil hope he can catch you at that weak point before you mount up. Because if I can just get through this, I believe this thing's going to turn in my favor. It's got to. Now, if I close right now, we should close our Bible and say, you know what? I'm changing my attitude. We're going to hit the devil hard this morning. Look at Romans chapter 4. Look at verse 16 through 18. Say hoping against hope. You got verse 16? He says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, 
to the end or for the reason that the promise might be sure to who? All the seed. How many of you know he's talking about the seed of Abraham? Say, that's me. God wants me to know his promises are sure to me. That's all he's saying. And the way, that's why he said I'm going to make it by, by faith that it might be by grace. Not because grace means I'm married to faith. Grace means even when you come up short, even when you got mad, even when you, the promise is still sure. I just need you to release your faith and I'll use my grace to do it for you anyhow. The heal to deliver and set free in it. That's why God fits the word of God. I'm not going to do it based off of you. I'm going to do it based off of Jesus. He took your place. And he says that the promise might be sure to not just the big time preacher. God is talking to everyone in here. If you be Christ, if you don't know this, this is Galatians 3.29. If you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to all of these promises. So God is not, he's talking to everybody and not just the preacher in the pulpit, not just the deacons. He said, I want you to know you can depend on my word. He said, therefore, it's a faith that it might be by grace that the promise might be sure to all to see, not only the day which is of the law, the keeping of the law. No one can keep it perfect. He said, but also they which are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father Notice what he said about Abraham, not going to. He had a promise, and it had to be sure to him. He wanted to be sure to you. I made thee a father of many nations before or like him whom you believe, even God, which kick into the dead and call it those things that be not as though they were, who against hope bleed in hope. He had a hopeless situation. What God spoke to him about, at 75, looked like at 100, there's no way it was going to happen. But he stood for 25 years. And there will be people who will tell you, ain't no hope for your child. Ain't no hope for your, you hear, man, you, that's the third case of cancer. Ain't, ain't no hope for you to come out of finance. That we're talking about in debt, $20,000. Ain't no hope for, matter of fact, there's son God spoke to me about this called evil hope or negative hope. See, as long as you, when you're talking about positive hope, let me help y'all understand hope is simply the blueprint to faith. Now faith is the substance of things. It's your expectation. What are you hoping for? What's your goal? Faith says, what do you want me to bring to pass? Direct me. I need an image. Okay? But there's something called evil hope. When you start talking about positive hope, people, oh, I wouldn't get your hopes up about you. How I many have heard that before? You don't hear nobody say, I wouldn't get your love up. I wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get your meekness up. Why you don't pick on hope? Because it's okay to have negative hope. We do it all the time. There are people, haters, people who, watch this phrase. Sometimes we say it out loud, sometimes we're just thinking. I hope she just fell. You ever heard that? I mean, people in their mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hope she just get sick and then she'll find out what it means to be. I, I, I hope that church fail. I hope their marriage don't work. There are people, who, that's called negative hope. And to some people, that's normal. They're wishing negative things in their mind on you. They have a negative expectation about you. Your marriage, your job. I hope she get fired. Coming in here with a new car and that, I, she can't speak. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you how people think. Some of these people say it out loud. You've heard it. That's called negative hope. But when we're, we're talking about when the world gives you no hope, the Abraham hope that gives hope. 100 years old, look hopeless, body dead. She was wrong. Looked like it was past time. Come on, let's just, let's, come on, let's bring this into the now. Some of you women that want to have children, when you get about 30 or 40, it starts looking kind of rough, like maybe that time, that cycle is ended. Must last 90. How many people going to give you hope? You own, you got Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, every dog on thing in a wheelchair, and you talking about, I, I'm, I'm the mother, man. She's kind of a little see now. Just going to let, just don't, just entertain her. See, people, that, they, that folks who will give up on you 
when the doctors say cancer, give up on your child. We're talking about hoping against hope when it seems that God can't even be found. Why am I preaching? Why am I sitting in the balcony? How my child is acting. Everybody in the neighborhood, his own drugs, his own alcohol, they're like that boy going straight. And yet, you just some crumbs crazy. You can't let go of the fact that's my baby and I'm hoping against hope. I don't care how far they own crack cocaine. I don't care what type of addiction program recovery. They will come out, my child, hoping against hope. That's what Abraham did. He says, God, I don't know where you've been the last 25 years, but, but I, I can't give up because if I, if I lose my hope, my heart will be sick. And I'll lose my desire. That's hope is all sometimes you got to hold on to. That this thing going to change. For my faith, you know, it don't look like it. It don't feel like it. But that money going to come in. We're going to get that house. I'm, I'm going to get my baby. We'll go to college and graduate, even though they said they declined the application for a school loan. Hoping against hope. Whew. They didn't know I'm hurting them. God's going to heal this relationship anyhow. Right now I'm hurting. Right now I'm bleeding. But I can't quit. How many of you know when you... When, if there's just a glimmer of hope, that's enough to go on and put on your makeup. Go ahead and put on your high heel shoe. Let me go on and put on my dress. I'm going to get the best smile I can. I don't even know why. I don't feel like it can come, but I'm coming anyhow. Because this could be the day that this thing breaks. This could be the day that this thing turns. And if it is, I don't want to be sitting at home watching television, having a pity party when God was ready to meet me at church. Who against hope bleed in hope? He hoped on that he might still become the father of many. I don't care what my body, I don't care how many years it's been. I know y'all gave up on me. Sometimes you have to stand by yourself. Sometimes you got to believe in yourself. When nobody else got confidence in you, you got to say, I believe in me. And I know God still believes in me. Yeah, I made some mistakes. Yeah, I done done some dumb stuff in my life. And everybody wrote me off, but I still believe in me. Because when you quit believing in you, Ain't nothing left. Hopelessness at the end. I'm not going to let somebody else define my life because of the decision they made. Stuff they did. Ooh, man. Man, God want to do something. He want to, you're going to have to go deep with me. Put this up and amplify. Therefore, inheriting the promises of God is an outcome of faith. Because we won't be sure. And God said, first of all, I'm going to make these promises where even though you weren't perfect, if you just give me your faith, I'll use grace. The outcome of faith depends entirely, uh, excuse me, the outcome of faith depends entirely on faith in order, this is the reason, that it might be given the promise as an act of grace, a merited favor, making it stable, sure, valid, guaranteed to all the descendants, the seed, you and I. Not only the day who are devotees and adherent to the law, but also those who share in the faith of Abraham, who thus is the father of us all. As it is written, I've made you father of many nations, he appointed our father in the sight of God, whom he believed, who gives light to the dead and speaks of non-existent things. See, that's what, when you get this thing on the inside to you, you ain't going to wait on it to change on the outside. You start speaking of non-existent things like, you are, I'm out of this thing. My child shave anyhow. Things, non-existent things. See, up in the den, Isaac had, come, had, had not come yet, but he spoke of non-existent things. He couldn't give up hope. That, here's the key, that he has foretold and promised. 
See, that's what's sure, the promise, which is given by an act of, of, of grace as you use your faith. Just keep trusting God in him. You don't have to have perfect faith. Use what you got, just a mustard seed. Give God something to work with. He said, as if it was already existed. Watch this. Here we go. For Abraham, here we go. For all human, keyword human, reason for hope. Being gone. Hoped on in faith. That hold that there, that he should become the father of many nations as he had promised. See, his hope came from the promise. That's what gives you hope. And expect that God promised me to save my child. God's promised me to heal my body. God, and you know, I, it looks like God can't be found. All I got is his promise. My body is dead, Sarah room. He hoped on because it had been promised so numberless shall you see and as soon as me. But look at this phrase. Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped on everything. That's what I want to get into. Human reason. Human beings. You know, we all look for a doctor, a lawyer, somebody, a realtor, or somebody put us over. And at some point in your life, when flesh, human beings fail you, you're going to have to redirect your faith and say, you know, in the natural, no, come, no one ain't giving you hope. No one was preaching to Abraham. You know, no one. There are times you're the only one who believed it. No other human being. And you're looking for just one person. One person. And sometimes you can't find that one. Abram said, I know God said it, so I'm going to quit looking at human beings and I'm going to redirect my faith and my hope in God. Put that up. Abraham redirected his hope from human beings to God. I know this is a good doctor, but he's not God. I know this is a good attorney, but he could fail. I know that, you know, you're a great person, but they can't heal me. They can't change my child. They can't heal my heart. Only God is, that's what we miss. And don't get me wrong. It's okay to have a certain amount of faith in folks around you. But to be honest with you, all human beings and human flesh is limited and subject to fail. And Abraham said, you know what? I'm going to, all reason for human hope is gone. I don't care what the doctor do. I don't care what the doctor say. Can't no shots help me. Can't no injections help me. Viagra can't help me. See, Alice can't help me. I ain't trying to be funny. I, those are all human beings. This is going to take God. God, and, and, and it, it, He hoped against hope. And that's the first step. He re redirected to God and his word. That's when you got to go back to the promise. That's why Bible says he considered not his body. I ain't looking at my body no more. He would get depressed. He'll look at Sarah's womb and it was dead. I ain't, I ain't looking at it. These are human beings. Let me go back to the Bible. See, there's two, two, there's two sources of hope. There's hope that comes from the world, which is none, and hope that comes from the word. Human hope comes from the world. And when the world say you can't get out of that, there's no way you can pay our bill. Your son is too far on drugs. That last state of cancer, you too far gone. You got a good, and that human hope, doctors, Lord, no one, you got to go to the word. You got to learn how to redirect your hope and your expectation and open your Bible and say, but God, you said, by my stripes you will heal. You said no weapon formed against me, sir. You said that you would bring me out of death. Matter of fact, that's where hopelessness comes from, failed expectation in human beings. I expected this morning. I expected, yeah, 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 we all did. And we all been let down. But don't lose hope. They just human beings. God is God. And Abraham said, when all reason for human hope is gone, he hoped on, he hoped against hope. The world gave him no hope. The doctors give you go home. People say you can't pay off your bills. People say you can't get the title to your house. People say you can't be debt free. Everything God has promised is going to always be someone. I hope they fail. I hope that. I hope Pastor did that church. That people been hoping against this church for 40 something years and we done paid it off. Well, why? Because they feel like my failure is going to justify, make them feel better because if he can't do it, if he does debt free, they going to look at me. 
And so I don't want people looking at me. So it's easier to hope that someone else fail than to face the responsibility and critics about why I'm not succeeding. Some of you didn't hear what I just said. You put pressure on people. Because if God did it for you, that means so much for he'll do it for me. And I don't want to have to take the responsibility. But if we all fail, if nobody do it, nobody's child gets saved, nobody get out of debt, then I can say, oh, man, that's the crazy. God wants to use you as a trendsetter. God says the curse stopped here even with though mama and daddy and all them failed and lost their home and marriage was bad and lost all this. And no one got a debt. God, it's time for you. You, you the one with the promises. You, the, the buck stops here, devil. You're not touching another generation. I'm going to prove this thing is right in the name of Jesus. What mama and daddy couldn't accomplish, it's going to happen in my generation and in my child's generation. Somebody got to break that thing and say enough is enough and just keep on hoping against hope. You would think I would have came from a family of lawyers, doctors, this, that, all my brothers, this, that. And the truth is, I was born on 220 Beeman Street to George and Clara did. Mama cleaned houses for other people to make a way, and my dad was a night watchman. I didn't have no special privileges. We slept up and down in a, in a, in a, in a four-room a uh, duplex house connected to someone else. You can hear people beating, crying, all that stuff through the wall. Them thin walls, you can hear all that. You knew everything that was going on. Everything. I mean everything. <laughs> we had a mama room. We had a living room. We had, we had a, we had a de- de- bedroom and a kitchen. All the boys and girls slept up and down. We slept in big old beds. Some of you, y'all got your own bed, your own room, all air, all this stuff. Man, I, what you talking about on air? Better open the window. I had four boys up and down in the bed. My brother, no old stinking pole, be up on the, and then one of them had a, a peeing problem, but I ain't gonna talk about that. We had, we had to get him a roll away. We all got wet. And then wintertime, that stuff was cold. And then you had to go heat some water and put it in the bathtub. You remember what I'm talking about? Hot water, what's that? And then all the girls were on the side. And you would have thought, ain't no way I could be with some of you. I'm telling you all that, but I kept hoping. One thing my mama had, she read me the Bible. She taught me to listen to Billy Graham and the seed got in me. That maybe God can just use me. Ain't got nothing to do with me being born on by my color race. I didn't listen to that. People talking about this and make excuses and I'm dead. And don't make no excuses. You just keep hoping against hope. You can come out of anything. Are you listening to me? Just refusing to quit. When, you, when God seemingly can't be found. Oh, God help. It's Labor Day. Y'all ain't got to work tomorrow, so I get to preach long. <laughs> Psalms 42. Don't be looking at me with them rushy eyes. You ain't got to do nothing tomorrow. No more. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? He, and why? Sometimes your soul. And, and sometimes you need to talk to yourself. Because David, that's what he, he's talking. He's encouraged. He said, why are you cast down, oh, my soul? Why am I feeling low, down, hopeless? See, mental attacks, emotional attacks, <laughs> smiling but spirit sick on him. He says, why are you disquiet within me? I know everybody see the guy <laughs> smiling, ushering, greeting, singing. But why are you, why are we going through this, soul? Hope thou in God. That was his problem. He was losing hope, expectation from God. Hold down God for I shall yet praise him. Sometimes you got to just praise him when you don't even, by faith. I don't even know why I'm praising God, but I know I need to do this. I need it for me because God will not have to pray because I'm already depressed. Maybe if I just start praising him, get a little hope back, praise him, that anointing will get this burden off of me and this spirit of heaviness will just get off of me if I put on the garment, but even though I don't feel like it, and I don't can't see or feel God nowhere. We're talking about hoping against hope. Doing stuff that you don't feel like doing. He said, I, I, I got to get my hope back in God. 
who is the health of my countenance, he's my God. Hoping to get his hope. <laughs> Put up my other foundation scripture. Where does hope really come from? What sort of thing was thus written in the former days was written for our instruction. That's why I'm a teacher. God told me, you, I'm not preaching for emotional response, even though some of y'all are preaching. That ain't what I want to instruct you. So that when the emotions are gone and that devil show up in the middle of the week, you know how to win. Because feelings are temporary. Woo! Woo! You can't remember nothing in the middle of it that was beating your head. Because, child, you didn't hear the instruction. You were too busy falling out. I ain't not know I'm praising God, but anyway. For re- these things were written for our instruction that by our steadfast and patient endurance and encouragement drawn from what? The scripture. The word of God. What? We might have hope. We might hold fast and cherish what? Hope. Where does hope come from? The scripture. The scripture. You got to go to the word. We don't feel like going to the word. Speaking the word. We don't believe in the word. We don't hope it against hope. Because that's the only encouragement I'm coming Because human reason for hope. Ain't nobody preaching to me. There's sometimes you want someone to say, you can make it. You can. And sometimes it ain't that people don't want to encourage you. It's just that they battery dead themselves. That my God, I'm drained. How am I going to you talking about charge you? We all looking for a little jump start. Somebody to, <clears throat> you know. Uh, what you call that thing with the heart? Uh, fri- defibrillator. Sometimes we almost dead, we, but we on life support. <laughs> we all looking for Man, I need a little something. Huh? And that's when you got to realize human beings can't do it. And see, we didn't decide, well, maybe if I go get high, maybe if I drink, all those things are deceptive substitutes. Because when you get high, get to drink, do whatever you think going to make you feel better. Them bills gonna say, I still gotta be paid. You come out, yeah, you just you just sobered up. Them bills gonna They were gonna say that's still your old mean wife, your old mean husband. You still gotta deal with them. You still the doctor still say you got cancer right there. So that don't don't get deceived in things that temporarily feel better. Go to the scripture if you want to have hope. He said, encouragement. Drawn by, why y'all think I find the scripture and give scripture references to encourage you? That you forget about even the messenger and say, but he passed about the scripture. I'm going to hold on. Sometimes that's all you got to hold on to. Hoping against hope. The scripture said God to save my boy. The scripture said God to heal me. The scripture said God to get me out of debt. I know all this devastation thing. They got foreclosure, no coming. But I, where is the scripture? That's you got to learn to go to the scripture. Encouragement drawn from the script, the word of God. So hope comes from the word of God. Amen. Now let's keep this thing going. Praise God. We're talking about hoping against hope when God seemingly can't be found, even though He's right there. We know it. Let me make this statement. Hopelessness then tries to make you feel helpless. And I added something to that, which is a big lie. Some people don't even know that's a lie. Look at you. What you going to do about that? The doctor say you got cancer. You're going to die. Look at your son. He's on drugs. You, your son got a life sentence, and he's on so-and-so. Ain't no way he's going to get that sentence reversed. You just help. Look at you. Look, look at that relationship. That's dead. Look how they treated you. Look at that job situation. Huh? You've been fired, and you got now, you got this 30-year mortgage break. Yeah. And, and, and all of this stuff, we take it upon ourselves. And what the devil tried to do make you forget about God, who is your help, what you going to do. He asks he you, what you going to do about your son? What you going to do about this? What you, and, we'll, and we'll take it personal. And all of a sudden, we look at our money, our bill, and it makes you feel helpless. Like, dog, I can't do nothing. Guess I just quit. I just, I just stay home. I ain't going back to church. That stuff as it is, teach don't work. It worked. You just need some encouragement, honey. If you would have came to church today, you would have got some. And that's what they didn't mean to do. He'll say, why are you coming to church? Why? It all goes to you. Where are you going to get the money from? Your house payment. 
your bill, what the doctor said about you. Wait a minute. And if you don't watch it, you stop being helpless. Because that's what hopelessness try to do, which is a big lie. And that's when you need to go to the scripture. You need to turn over to Psalm 121 and read this to the devil. And say, oh, oh, it ain't about me and what I got. Matter of fact, I'm going to redirect my focus. You want me to look at me, but I will lift up my eyes. See, eyes are about what you focus on, who you're looking to. Because who you're looking to is who you're going to trust. Are you listening to? Are you going to look to the doctor? Are you going to look to the realtor? Are you going to be mere human beings, reason for human hope? Go. From whence cometh my help? Keep going. My help cometh from the Lord. And devil, just in case you want to read his resume, let me start here. Which made the heavens and the earth. Now, if God can make the heaven and the earth, he can pay my rent. He can heal this body. I mean, that's just part of his resume. So you got to remind yourself what God has already done. Because what happened, we begin to personalize and eternalize. And we look at our bill, how I feel, and this and that. And that's where depression comes from. Depression is overconsumption with yourself. How you feel. How you, what you went through. How I'm here. And how I'm. And, I, and the more you do it, even though your flesh is good, you sink deeper and deeper and deeper. Because now you're feeling helpless. And helpless people don't want to do nothing. Helpless people don't have no energy. Helpless people will sit there and watch the house rot. I ain't paying. I ain't making up the bed. I ain't going to grab no more. You see hopelessness, it'll show up in the yard. Grass done grew up. People been sitting out on the bed. They, I mean, I mean out on, they, have a, they, have a, they have a couch out on the porch. You see that? You know that's old. You know they have got a couch. They just lay there and it slumped down. They ain't doing nothing. Kids running around in this tall grass. Got old broke down car, one wheel off, on the jet, everything. It done rusted. They ain't doing nothing. I ain't, well, why? I ain't cooking. I ain't, you, if you get in the house, if you can get through the house, you'll find the dishes stacked up. They ain't been watched in two months. You got tomato ketchup, mustard, heart. You can't get it all with a night. Been sitting there. Nobody ain't wash clothes. For what? Why don't I wash clothes? It don't matter. You got socks everywhere, stinking stuff, underwear here, there, toenails in the carpet. Huh? Oh, it sounds like somebody been in that house. Like, yeah, I've been there. But I know somebody just recently. Cheeto sacks. I mean, why? I feel helpless. So why? And that's when you got to hope again. So I don't even know why. All I know is that I'm hoping that tomorrow will be better. Amen. If I stop today, you got it because hope deferred. If I, that's all I got left. Hope is about your future, where you're headed. Not your past. God is saying, I got good plans for you. A good future and a good final end. But you'll never know if you stop now because of how you feel. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 6. Let me move. Let me speak this thing up just a little bit. So you got to redirect your focus. Sometimes I will lift up my eyes into the hills. I always remember when you feel darkness, gloomy, down and out, remember to shift your focus. Well, what do you think? Because it's what you're thinking about. That's called your soul is thinking on the wrong thing. And, 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 and the gloom and the misery and the hurt and the... Shift your focus. Just shift your focus on something that you like, something that you enjoy, something that's worth fighting for. Put it on your child. Well, well I, but what about my baby? I can't quit. My daughter, I got a daughter in this way. I got a son. I, you got to sh- You got to have something to give you a reason to go on. Because somebody believe in you. I said somebody believe in you. There's somebody that didn't come up to you and told you. Believe in you. I told to a guy, I grew up with, right before I got saved, he was one of my drug buddies. And I found out he was still living. I saw his mom at the Andrews football game. I got his number and I called him. After 48 years. And I just called him and began to testify to him. 
of what God did in my life. Huh? And he said, man, I heard about you. He's in Rochester, New York. He said, man, the boys say you're doing it big. That's how they talk now. I said, I ain't doing nothing. They said, no, man. They said, this God said, this all the people. He was hoping in me. He said, man, I've been hoping. That's why I called him. He said that Edward was asking about you because everybody else is dying. I had another mama, schoolmates, and some of you know who I'm talking about just recently. Man. I said, we were like, man. He said, man, I heard. I'm just trying, trying to see you. There are people believing you. You don't even know. I ain't even in the state. And you got to find some reason to go on. Hallelujah. When seemingly God can't be found. Hebrews chapter 6. Real quick here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 17 and 19. Talking about Abraham again. You know, I could have started with 13, but I'm going to start with just 17 here. Wherein God will and more abundantly to show the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel. Immutability means unchangeable. Who are, who are the heirs of the promise? Huh? Okay, so who was God talking to? You and I. He said, God went a step further. I, and I've read this for years. And, you know, if somebody tell you, I'll pay your bills, I'll give $500, that should be enough. Just believe what they said. Swear to me. You ever heard that? <laughs> Swear on Mama Gray. Well, you know what they're saying? You're a liar. Think about it. I gotta swear. Then I say, swear. Show on Mama Gray on Mama Tomb. You, you know, cross your fingers and hope. I, no, I ain't gonna cross my fingers. I don't hope to die. I hope to live. But, but God says, you know what? I'm God. Because y'all human beings need something. I'm going to confirm it by oath that I don't change. He confirmed his word. He said, I swear by myself. And in verse 13, that's what he said. Because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. He told Abraham before, I break my promise to you or your seed, I'll kill myself. Now, I hope that. And why did he do it? Keep going. That by two immutable things, that it was impossible for God. See, they're doubting the integrity of God. But my body is old. Say, removed it look like hey. He said, Look, I swore by myself hmm, that we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge. You're looking for somebody, a refuge, a hiding place to lay hold on the what hope set where before us, where in the promise. He just read the immutability of his promise, that's why he did it, amen. Therefore, it's of grace, and it might be by faith that the promise might be sure. That's what Abraham, to hope. And that hope, you got to, hope is still set before you. In the promises, faith is a substance of things hoped for. Don't throw away your faith. Hallelujah. Even though it looked crazy. God cannot lie. Now, put this up in the Amplified. Real quick, real quick. Here, here we go. He says here, according God also in his desire to show more convincingly beyond doubt. It was to get rid of doubt in your old mind. I didn't know about saying I'm healed, but y'all can't see that now. Nah, yeah, God said the knot don't matter. The bump don't matter. Yeah, but the doctor said I got that don't matter. I'm going to do something to get rid of the doubt in your mind. I shouldn't have to do it. He says, to show beyond doubt to those that were in the hair of the promise, you and I, the unchangeableness of his purpose and plan intervened, mediated with the oath. He swore by himself. Why? So that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his hope, which it was impossible for God to prove false and deceive us, we might have strong, we, we might fled to him with, that we might have mighty and dwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and lay hold on the hope set before us in the promise. Encouragement, strength. Hoping against hope. So you don't have to doubt. When you when it seems like God, well, where is God? Well, don't doubt. He said, I can't lie. I'm going to say your child. It look like now you don't know what I'm doing. You know, sometimes God works behind the scenes. It seems like at the last minute, that's when boom, bam, whoop, there it is. But you got to trust God. We can't see nothing. We can't feel nothing. You need encouragement. He said that hope is the only thing you have a hold on to. Hoping against hope. Hoping against hope. Tomorrow be better. 
tomorrow. And it will. Tomorrow will get better. Isn't it amazing how we judge our whole life and bring the totality of our life and, 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 and the final conclusion on how we feel today? And tomorrow, you, not only will it get better, you will feel better. If you keep hoping against hope, you have a different outlook. I don't want to make a rash decision based on how I'm feeling today. That's how people are messed up. I just quit. Take this job and shut it. I was looking for a job when I came here. You were feeling frustrated. And you just assume you're going to walk out and get another job. And now it's been three months. Your kids, your family starving. They, you behind rent. They talking about putting you out. I mean, you ain't big mama done told you. You ain't coming back to our house with all them kids. So, because you made a rash decision. Because you were feeling like that. And you, that day you felt bad. You looked good. Man, boy, so quick. Told, told, told the, told the put supervisor off. Oh, but they don't see you struggling. <laughs> they them car payments coming all that. Because you made a rash decision. Yeah, you look good in front of everybody, but now you're hurting. And your wife doesn't tell you, I ain't going back to your in-laws out no more. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, and big mama them. But anyway, <laughs> you know big mama. Them. So what am I trying to say? You need a refuge. You need something to hold on to. Put this statement up. Hope then becomes a stabilizer. You know, no, hold it, hold it. We didn't even read verse 19. Put a verse 19 to amplify before I put this up. I, t- I said verse 19. I never even gave it to you. And I don't want to need to amplify it. Verse 19. Now, we have this hope. Let me tell you what this hope does. That is sure, steadfast, to do what? Anchor what? What's your soul? And your, and your and your feeling, all of that feeling, motion, mind, quit, crown, why don't you kid? Ah, ah, ah. Look at you, look at that. Hoping against hope. That's why you need an anchor. When you feel like quitting, giving up, you need some anchor to pull you back over to the word. You need something to remind you. How many of you know when an anchor comes in, praise God, and, and whether you're on Royal Caribbean or whether you're the carnival and, and you put in at, at, at St. Lucia or wherever, then that anchor go down, even though those waves, are, that boat will move so much, but then that anchor stabilizes. You need the scripture to say, when you feel like quitting, feel like giving up, when you can't find God and you can't feel God, and look at my child and look at my bills and look what happened and I got fired and ah, I'm just, I'm tired of this, I quit. I you need somebody, someone, that's why you need to come to church and get an anchor. That's my job is to remind you to pull your old mind back. It's worth going on just because this happened. It ain't over until God says it's over. You can still win. The doctor don't have final authority on your life. God has final authority. And God says you'll live and not die. God can still change your child. That's what scripture it puts an anchor. Uh Uh-huh. And this anchor, it cannot slip. It cannot break down under whoever. This thing will work for anyone on the scene, not just the big time preaching pastor. Whoever steps out on God's word. I feel hopeless, but God, you said And I don't even know why I'm going to church. I know the doctor said this, but my child looked like that, my finances, but I'm going to step out on it anyhow. That's what Abraham did. I don't even know why I'm still believing. He stepped out upon it, a hope that reaches far and enters into the very certainty, capital P, the presence of God himself. Your hope goes up to the presence of God. What you see, God sees. Where there's no vision of people perish. Not only do you see it, Long as you see yourself coming out, it goes into the pre- that hope, that inner image of your success, of your child, of your deliverance. Your, when you get that thing from the word, God sees it. And he's saying, don't you quit. Don't you give up. I'm working on this thing. Hallelujah. Though it tarry, hallelujah. You praise God for the vision is yet for appointed time. Right? The bit, make it plain. In the end, it's going to speak for itself and not lie. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about when other people give up on you and say evil hope. Ain't no hope for them. Ain't no hope for them. Ain't no hope for this. Ain't no. oh, that's okay. I'm glad my life ain't in your hand. I'm glad. I'm going to hope against hope. What you hope happened, praise God, I'm, I'm hoping against hope. 
But the doctor said, I'm hoping against hope. Come on. Ain't that what the woman with the issue of blood did? Did they tell her we can't do nothing? They should have told her that from the beginning. But no, they're going to wait until she's broke. Took all the money. Then said, well, she got work. But she said within herself, she hoped against hope. I don't even know why I'm doing this. But I ain't got nothing to lose. If I get out and they, they, they want to declare me unclean, storm me, I don't care. She got in the press, hoping against hope. But I can touch the hem of the sun. It's still happen. I know it's for you. I know I'm weak. I know some of you all know just your menstrual cycle, how weak you get. You have to take iron pills. Can you imagine? No blood in your body, the weakness in that body, but she got out there. Hoping again. What? You think she felt like doing that? Hope I'm talking about has nothing to do with your feelings. It's like, I'm just expecting favorable change. Feelings can get, I shit if I'm going to caught that. Feelings can catch up later. Hallelujah. You're going to look back and say, I'm so glad I didn't quit. Because I was dead cold. I felt like not coming to church. I felt like, but I hope to get hope. Which has nothing to do with your feelings. If you're waiting to feel this, you, you're going to miss it. It's on the other side of how you feel. When you just act, put your actions in there. You think those lepers felt like going short. But as they went... As I get up and go through the motions, moving toward God anyhow, praising God anyhow. So now, hope then becomes a stabilizer for your mind and emotions when you're under attack. Because that's, that's when, the, <laughs> it's when you're under attack that you make crazy decisions. This is when people pull guns. This is when people do crazy stuff. This is when people sign loans for, that they can't pay back. They was under so much pressure. And you need something to stabilize you. You need someone to pull you back. Because the doctor's saying do this. And, and you're saying what's the use. And, and, and you know you got bad news from the IRS. And you owe them. And, and then you get laid off. And then you got foreclosure coming in. It's like <laughs> you need somebody. You need a refuge somewhere to go to. Well, go to the scripture. Go to the word of God. He said we have this hope as a stabilizer. An anchor for the soul. Hope becomes a stabilizer for your mind and emotion when you're under attack. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to go back to Psalms 42 and I'm going to start it up a little further. Go back to Psalms 42 because David was under attack. His own son had led an insurrection against him. Tried to kill him. He had, had all types of devastation in his family. Saul, who he loved dearly, had thrown spear time and time again. Hmm? Forsaken him. Seemed like he's at a low point. Many times he was backed up in a cave of Abdullah under duress. Could have quit. Where is God at? Why is my child turning on? Why is my family falling apart? Why is it? But instead... He asked himself again, sometimes, like I said, this ain't about no one else. This is about you, God, in the, your room. Because I, 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 nobody understanding how human reason can't understand what I go through. So I got to get with God. Why art thou cast down on my soul, my mind, my, why are you disquieted? Why is there no peace in you? There it is. Hope thou in God. Expect from God. Look to God. For I should yet praise him. Please the help of my confidence. That's why you got to praise till you figure this thing out. Praise and keep you going till you figure it out. Sometimes, you, I, how many do, do, do we have a sacrifice fish of praises that I, I got? know I got to praise God. I don't care what the money in the bank or not. I don't care what the doctor said. I, I know if, if the enemy cut off my praise, that's my strength, the joy. I know I got it. Now, I'll figure it out. I don't know, say, no, I don't know where God at. Yes. He said, oh, my soul is cast down within me. No, no, go back, go back, go back. We just missed the verse. Let me see. No, we didn't. Keep going. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, we remember thee. You know what he's saying? From Jordan, you got to go back. Across the Jordan. Brought me out of sin. Sometimes you got to go back what he already done. 
You done forgot. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not. Wait a minute. I'm ready to quit, but wait a minute. He forgave all my iniquity. He healed all my iniquity. Wait a minute. That people died drunk, but he redeemed my life from destruction. I got to be here for a while. Wait a minute. What am I holy? Can't be that bad. I still got my life, health, and strength. Are you listening to me? I don't remember anything from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and, and the hills of Mizar. Watch this. Watch this. This is what sometimes you got to go. Your spirit, but only you and God live in there. And you, you can't express this to nobody how you really feel. And yet God understands the depth of our spirit, soul, and body. And he says this deep. The deepest part of me, call it out to the deep. God, this thing is too deep for yearning, work, but you know. You know what I'm going through. You know how I feel right now. And the deepest part of me. In other words, I'm stepping out in the deep. I'm stepping out in the world like he told Simon Peter, come out in the deep. Because the next day, and thy bill, thy ways and bill are gone over me. I'm going to step out into your wisdom, your understanding. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how you're going to turn this around and work for my good. But all I know, the deepest part of me, I'm as honest as I know how I cry out to you. And when God, when you get to that point where deep cry to deep, that's when God is ready to move. Are you listening to me? Sometimes the depth of your spirit is so deep that you can't even put words. You can't even put. That's why God, the Bible says, bottle out tears. There's some things words can't express. There's some things that only tears. Sometimes you cry and don't. Do. It's okay to cry because the Bible says those tears is a language. Read the book of Psalms. He bottles them and he put their prayers. They're put with your prayer. That tear is a prayer over that child, over that situation, over that bill because the deepest part of you can't speak it so it cries out to God and God know the very thoughts and intents of your heart and sometimes it come out in tears sometimes it come out in murmur sometimes you can't do it in but don't think that that's in vain because God takes those tears it's a language that goes to heaven over your children over what the doctor and he bottles it and says I'm going to move praise God but don't you quit put up this statement he said, then you call upon me. See? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let me go back. Yeah. No, 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 no. I want you. Yeah, we ready to go to the, did I have a statement over that? I did? Okay, I have the scriptures there. Or did I? What do I have? Let me see what I got. Let me see what I, what do I have? What did I say? Hope becomes a statement. All right. So, what are we, where are we, what were we talking about? Jeremiah, okay, yeah, Jeremiah 29, there you go, 12 and 13. Then I will call, call upon, he said, you will call upon me, deep call, said deep, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and, and take heed. He said, I'm not as far as you think. I'm near. I just was waiting on the deepest part of you, the crowd. Then you will seek when you seek me inquire for me, watch this, as a vital necessity. See, now you thought you could do it. You could, but God, if, if how many of you know there's time, God, Father, I stretch my hands and you know, this thing is necessary. You're gonna, today, I got, he said, when that deepest part of you, he said, it becomes a vital, he said, then you'll find me. I'm not, I'm not lost. I'm right here. When you search for me with all your heart. He said, I'll answer. Now, go to Zechariah. I'm going to let y'all have most of your Labor Day. <laughs> go to Zechariah. He said, it's just a matter. You just, and that's something that only you and God know about. <laughs> that's why he said, deep, call it to the deep. Because sometimes you can be someplace and someone else don't know where you are, but God does. God does. That's what's important. He said, he says, I'm not, I'm right here. I never left you when you search for me with all your heart. Because sometimes life don't make sense. Anybody? You can be doing all the right thing, saying all the right thing, doing all the right thing, and still, do, you know, you, you, you be an honest Abe and still, you know, like, dog. I listen to one preacher, he said, man, 
He said, we were driving, me and my wife, I was on the way to preach, and, and uh, I didn't have on my seatbelt, and, and uh, the guy pulled me over, stopped my wife. First stopped my wife. I thought she was speeding. And, so, and I, I just had my seatbelt, so I, I went on and fast, and he said, he said the, the police didn't say nothing to him. Why? So he came up to me and said, did you have your seatbelt on? <laughs> and he was like, you see, I got it on, don't you? <laughs> did you have your seatbelt on? And he said, well, no, not really, I didn't. I wrote him a ticket. Told the truth, still got a ticket. Let him, why didn't he say nothing to her? I'm going to get you for a seatbelt. So what I'm trying to say, sometimes you can do what's right and still suffer. Dog, I thought if I told the truth, he might say, well, I'm going to warn you one that guy wrote me a ticket. Let my wife go. <laughs> but look at this scripture here it's fake, as, we, as we close. And this is Zechariah 9, verse 11. For we're talking about hoping against hope. He says here, and I love this. I love this. This, this is this. Oh my God! Oh, you. It's so much revelation in this that I don't care which way you preach it from. How many times you you preach from it? Zechariah uh, nine, uh, nine verse eleven says, "As he says, as for thee also by the blood of the covenant." That's so very important. God made a blood covenant. That's His word. Have I sent thee forth from the prisoner out of the pit with no water? Mm -mm -mm. You know, a pit is bad, but a pit with no water is worse because you're going to die of thirst if you don't sooner because at least water would sustain you. And he says, turn, watch this, ye to the stronghold. Ye prisoner of hope. Everyone say prisoner of hope. What, what is a prisoner of hope? Um, before I even teach this, what, 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 do you, what do you believe a prisoner of hope is? Yeah, that's good. Locked in. Good step. Two. Hope. Somebody else? Just, I want to get you, what, you, what you believe? I mean, you can't miss this. It is what it says. Now, a prisoner, remember, what is hope? Hope is favor, expectation. Where does hope come from? All right, so if hope comes from the word of God, what is a prisoner of hope? A prisoner, someone that locked themselves into what God's word said and said, I don't care what I feel. I don't care what it looked like. I'm going to not let go of the hope that come from that promise. Remember this hope, which is the anchor for your soul. And sometimes we need to become a prisoner of hope. Why? Because hope deferred makes the heart sick. And you got to lock yourself in because there's going to be days you don't want to feel like hope. You don't even going to feel like expectation. But when you become a prisoner, it ain't about how you feel. It's about what you locked into. Oh, you understand? What I mean, everybody watch Andy Griffin. Oldest come in drunk. He's a prisoner. He lock his own self up. You got to lock your own self up in this thing. Uh, and uh, hey, oh, how you doing? No, no, I got the keys, bond. Lock his own. You got to get in the word of God concerning your healing, your deliverance, your children. Say, I don't care how I feel tomorrow. I am becoming a prison of expectation. I'll still have hope. I'll hope against hope. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what the doctor said about my body. I don't care what happened to my finances. Lock yourself into the word of God. Because tomorrow you might not feel like that. But when you're a prisoner, you're around and you say, I can't get it. I told God. I, I committed it. I'm bound to this. Okay. You prisoner of hope. He says, if you if you'll return to your stronghold, he said, even today I declare I will render to you the double. And I know what we think about. We're thinking about twice. But I looked at that word double. And you know, double didn't mean what I thought it meant. Here, double just simply means. I looked it up, and, and I got my, my concordance, and, and it says your double means copy, duplicate, replacement. In other words, whatever you lost, whatever means you've gone, I'll replace it. You think I'll, hope it, I'll give it back. I, not twice as much. I'm just going to give it back. I know you're double for your trouble, Job, all that. He's talking about anything, your joy, I'll replace it. Your money, I'll replace it. If you don't give up hope, right. I, I'll, rep I'll give back. Whatever robbed you of your job, whatever robbed you of hope, I'll replace it. He said, I will render the double. Put this up in Amplify. I'm almost done. As for you also, because you, and for the sake of the covenant of the Lord and his people, which he sealed with the sprinkling covenant of blood, I've released and sent you forth from the prison. 
prison people out of Wallace Pit. He said there ain't nothing that can keep you down in the pit. Yeah. Only thing keep you down in the pit is you get pitiful. Okay, you won't pity. Pitiful people stay in the, in, in the pit. But you got to say, no, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm coming up out of this. He said, return to the stronghold of your security and your prosperity, you prisoner of expectation and hope that comes from the word of God. Even today, I would declare I will restore double for your, your former prosperity to you. I'll replace, I'll give back, I'll either replace or or, or, or do better. Amen. He said, but I'm going to give, if you don't give up hope, whatever got you in this situation, despair, he said, if you become a prisoner of hope, put this statement up, almost done, I'm coming home now. Lock your hope then into the promises of God. She ain't good enough just going, you got to say, I don't care what I feel tomorrow, next day, God promised me that Abraham said that for 25 years. How many mornings you will, well, one day he woke up and just said it didn't look like that could happen. And the key is you never know the next day could be the day it manifests. The day you quit, the day you quit digging, the day that you threw up your hands instead of locking yourself in the hope. Let me give you these support scriptures until manifestation shows up. For in this we hope, this hope we are saved, hope is the object of which is seen is not hope. I don't hope for a mic, I see it. I don't hope for a podium, I see it. You're believing for what haven't manifest yet. Keep going. For if we hope for that that is unseen, then we deal with what? Patience and composure. We wait for it with patience and composure. The devil hope you freak out before your healing, for your deliverance shows. That's all he got. He thinking you're just going to not have the, the, the endurance, the step back. That most people do. They don't, 25 years, shoot, they were hope against hope. Shoot, man. I, I forgot about that baby when I was 77, 100. Some of you when he got to 76. He still went, man, 75, talking about a baby. Shh. Man, I let that thing go, man. Baby, well, man, I've adopted. I got a kid here from Africa. I got one for we See, and then what happens is we create substitutes and call. God, and God is saying, you got it with patience. Wait for it. Remember, hope is faith. Tomorrow can be different. Tomorrow can be a whole different outlet. Matter of fact, as one great person said, and it's just a saying, I don't put too much hope in people saying, but he said, when you go to bed and go to sleep, he says, it's like you die, if you think about it. I ain't talking about literally die. Don't get scared of the word. I'm talking about your emotions and darkness, everything is like a death. You know you're going to wake up. He said, so when I go to bed and die, he said, I wake up. It's a new day. It's a new dream. New. In other words, that's the first day of my life. Every day is new. That's how sometimes you have to praise pray, hope because if you don't want to despair, you reach back, Satan gets you go back into despair. Your path, yeah, but, yeah, and there it go, there it go. You got to wait. What God got for you is greater than what you're coming out of, what you've just come out of. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Give him, give him some praise. All right, Psalm 27, Psalm 27, verse 13. I'm almost done. I know it's Labor Day. Not yet. What you would have become, what would have become of me? Just think about it. Just think you just would have quit. In the middle of that, five years ago, two years ago, last week. You don't know. I haven't seen, you haven't seen the things God has prepared for. That's why hope is so important, it has a new outlook. What would have become of me had I not believed to that I would see the goodness of the Lord? Huh? Right here in the land of the living. It ain't over with. Life don't end it unless you end it. Hopelessness, hopefully, say that's it. Keep going. Wait. Hope. Huh? Favorable expectation for good. Expect from who? People? Human resources? The Lord. Be brave and of good courage. Let your heart be stout and, and in doing yes, wait, hope, and expect from the Lord. What would have become of so many people what might, might, don't realize they forfeit what could have been? Just another day, just another week, 
God orchestrated. You know, but you got too impatient. You couldn't wait for it. You, you're going to make something happen. Mm, let's close then with a couple of statements here. So lock yourself in hope. We just did that one. So keep hope and expectation in God. Regardless of how dark it gets. Almost dark. God, because we're talking about hoping against hope. We're talking about, why am I even going? Why am I coming to church? Why do I keep showing up? Because you hope. Every day is a new outlet. His mercies are new every morning. God, don't bring my yesterday into the day. So that I got new expectations for this day. Keep your hope and expectation in God, regardless of how dark it gets. Romans 15, 13, which is so powerful, man. Even one of these scriptures. Man, you can, ooh, listen to this. May the God of your hope. <laughs> Did you get that? My hope is in the God of my hope, my expectation. So fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Believing what? The scripture, the word of God. The reason you ain't got joy and peace, you're believing what the devil said. You believe it ain't going to get no better. You believe it's just going to get worse. But the God of hope said he'll fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith, by the power of the Holy Ghost, who is your helper, God, and strengthener, that you may abound with overflowing, bubbling hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. Talking about don't get my hopes up. I'm going to get my hopes as high as a Georgia pine because hope deferred make the heart sick, and I'm not going to let the devil or no one else take away my desire. My hope is bubbling. You know where bubbling hope comes from? Time and the word. Time and the word. Confess word. Focus on the word. I will lift my eyes to the hill. Please come to my help. Holy Ghost will help you. He'll get involved. He's the God of your hope. Now let's close with Colossians. God bless y'all guys. Y'all been so good. Look at one and look at verse 22 and 23. And when this is hoping against hope. Going on even when God seemingly can't be found. There's going to be times, mornings. Watch this. Weeks, months, and there are even years as you're going to feel like, God, where have you been? And all the time he said, I ain't going to go anywhere. That's what, that's what uh, who was it? Gideon, that mighty man of valor. God cut you. He said, mighty man of valor. I'm the least of all the tribe. We the poorest of the tribe. I'm the poorest of Manasseh. See, God was calling things that be not as though they were. And then he said this. And where be all the miracles that was told us that you did? Where are you anyhow? Why are we on? Why, why are we on welfare? Why are we poor? That's mean times is gonna seem there'll be those seasons. But if you will keep hoping against hope, I guarantee you, because God swore in blood by Himself, it'll change. Favorable expectation. He says, in the body of your flesh through death, to present. Did, are we starting with verse 22 or did I miss something? Okay. And the body of his flesh, this is talking about Jesus, to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in the sight. That's how God looks at us through the blood. If, conditional, you continue in faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from what? Of the hope of the gospel. What is the gospel? Good news that Jesus Christ is anointed. That's why we come to church. Hopefully you get good news. Why do you, I know the devil been beating you and finding you in home, finances, marriage, children. But why would a preacher get up and spend the most, when he know what the devil been doing all week and not preach good news to his congregation? I don't get that. All I'm, I'm a bearer of good news. He said, don't be moved away from the hope, the gospel. The gospel give me hope for my child, hope for my finances, hope for my relationship, hope for, for my job situation, hope. And yet there are going to be people that, why oh, y'all, you still going to church, girl? You still over there? Well, where you at, first of all? Let's talk about you, because you ain't nowhere. I saw you at the ABC. I saw you at the Looker House. So I know you ain't, so don't worry about where I'm at. You need to be where I'm at. You know, there's always someone trying to move you. He says, which you have heard, which was preached, to every creature which is under heaven, whereby I, Paul, have made a medicine. That's my job. I'm a minister of hope. Amplified. Yet, now Christ, the Messiah, who reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh, through death, 
to, in order to present you holy, faultless, unreprovable in the Father's presence. And this he will do, providing that you do continue to stay with, in the faith, in Christ, well-grounded, settled, steadfast, not shifting and moving away from the hope which rests on the inspiration of the glad tidings of the gospel, which you have heard, which has been preached by Pastor Diggs, been disguised, that be offered without restriction to every person on the heaven, whereby it's the gospel where I, Paul, and Pastor has been made a minister. Who's going to move you? What's going to move you? Why people, people, you'll be surprised. Uh, the people, uh, somebody said, he said, she said, yeah, offense will can move you. Uh, uh, something not happening anymore. Well, I ain't going to serve God because I was leaving for my mama to live and I lay and she died. Well, God didn't fail you. Is that going to move you? See, we get all these different things. People, situation. Well, you know what? I tell you what, man, if y'all didn't go there, I'm, well, our marriage didn't wait, work. So, hmm, huh, and if my ex going to go there, and you think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going there. God told me to go. I don't care, ex, present, or whatever. Let the ex go. Or you both get here and just walk in love. I'm just, what am I trying to say? I've seen people get moved and told me to put them out of the church and they keep going. That ain't my job. Anybody let me pass it them? I'm passing it. I don't care if you have five wives. If they all want to say go here, if they want, I got to let them stay. Now, that's up to y'all. Whether y'all going to fight, whatever, all that, I'm going to preach. <laughs> if I got to go and sit every week and look at them, they didn't remind me that I ain't going up. What will move you? You got to go back. What gave me hope? What, why did I come here to start with? When I was down and out, when I was before I got married, before I even met them anyhow, what drew me to this church? It was the word of God. It wasn't a personality. It wasn't his clothes. It was, it was what I heard in my spirit. And I ain't let nothing, nobody move me. Away from my, Let me close. Last statement. God bless so don't let anyone, anything, I might add anything, move you away from the hope of the gospel. I've seen it, man. Good people. I hear you don't know how you preach, so I had to leave. He didn't want me to tithe. I ain't trying to get in a relationship. That's y'all how y'all live. You know, I don't know, but I'm just trying to say I've seen all that stuff move. So-and-so left the church, and that was my best buddy. And you're going to move just because they left. God, you must have had a strong soul tie. Yeah, they, they just said they, they seasoned well. So, what? And you just left. Just up, you forgot about everything God did for you, your children, family, all that. You just, that that's all it took? Wow. And I'm not knocking it. You do what you want to do. I mean, that's your choice. It's one thing being directed by God is something or something moving you. A fan called social sin. So, Psalms 46.2, uh, and we're gone. We're done. I'll let y'all go home. Start, start your cookout. <laughs> My soul waited upon God, silently submitted to him. My hope, and this is so important, that's where this appointment comes from. It's by misplacing your expectation in the wrong person or thing. My soul expectation, my hope and ex is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I don't have to fight my own battles, my fortress, and I shall not be moved. In other words, I'm not going to let nothing or no one move me away from my hope and expectation. Thank y'all for being patient with me. Hope you got something. God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, praise God. Uh, if there's one person here, you don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life. You're not saved. You're not born again. You say, Pastor Diggs, if Jesus come now, I'm not saved. I want to be saved. Put your hand up real quick while the saints are praying. Put your hand up. Let me pray for you. I want to take for granted. Everybody know Jesus. If one person want to be saved, born again, put it high. I see two hands. Anyone else? And they ain't too young either. 